The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Those of you in PIWC, um, we have been meeting from time to time. And this forum is important for us because we want you to always examine yourself whether you are on course. If you are doing the right thing that we wanted you to do. It is very important that what we ask you to do, you do according to the pattern and the purpose. Try not to build your own church. You have to build a church according to our vision. The vision why we decided to bring on board PRWC, traveling secretaries, area head, home and urban missions, and all that. You try and build it according to the pattern. And you do it such that the system will also accept it easily. And so we want this forum to be an important one for every one of us. And I'm praying that by the close of the day, we'll have certain things to learn and then beef up what we already have as leaders. I want to read from Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 talks about the grace that God has given us from verse 11. Christ, Ephesians chapter 4 from 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, becoming mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So all of us who have joined the ministry, we have been made gifts for the church to equip, to perfect, to train the members. Verse 13. It says, until we all. And the word we includes the apostle. So the trainer plus the trainees. And we all. So the apostle is in the business of saving himself and his hearers. Just as Paul told Timothy. The PRWC traveling sec uh, pastor or the traveling secretary. You are in the business of saving yourself. And saving your hearers as well. So we are not like coaches. We are part of the ministry. So you are teaching, you are leading, but you have a salvation to protect. You have a spirit to grow. You need to also to mature. And so it is not about a position. It is about a privilege. Yeah, because this work that you are doing, you are expected to mature. So until we all rich unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So when are we going to have this, meet this standard? Eh? But this is where we are working towards. And until we get to this level, we don't stop. On every member of your church, has arrived at the fullness of the measure of Christ, you have work to do. So it is not time to sleep. It's time for work. And as we are, remember that you are not a coach. You are not somebody who is a master. None of us are masters. Because until we all, we all. Then verse 14 says that, then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheme. That word deceitful there and scheme 
is like deceitful, deceitful. It's the same kind of word. But when you hear the word deceit, then the spirit behind that word is the devil himself. He is the deceiver. Now, when we are talking about deception, we are talking about a very good combination of wisdom and lies. Good combination of wisdom and lies. That is why the devil, uh, his, his best arsenal, in fact, he himself is a liar. See, we don't have to fear the devil in terms of uh, the witches, the wizards, no. The devil does better things than producing witches. He, once he's a schemer, as so far as the devil is concerned, he is a deceiver. Sometimes you yourself can be deceived. You may think that you are light, but the Bible says if you don't take care, the light that you think you are as, as, is darkness. Not as turned to darkness, so it is darkness. Because it turned to darkness long time. Until now, it is darkness and you are not aware. We see deceit because of the presence of the devil on the planet Earth. And he is not going to be taken out now. He is the last enemy that God is going to destroy together with death and their colleagues. So we have work to do. Every one of us should brace himself to do something for the Lord. And I'm saying that as you are working for him, none of us should think, including myself, that we have been given some position and that we have arrived. Because we are in the business of saving ourselves and our hearers as well. Take this one closely. And know that the devil deceives. But this, the devil is hitting against the church. But you are supposed to hold the church. So once we are producing whole numbers, the devil is producing fractions. So we must always try to hold the church because of the devil. So you are teaching, you are praying, you are holding the church. And then observing whether they are maturing in faith. Whether they are arriving to the full measure of Christ. Then ask yourself, are you also doing better? Are you better than you were when you were in your previous station? Are you also growing? How is your family life? Uh, how is your family life? And then ask your wife, am I doing well? Am I a better husband? If he, she tells you you are the same, know that you, are, you don't qualify to be a teacher. Because you yourself should be an example. The people should feed on you. And they'll feed on you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. They will feed even on your mannerisms, unconsciously. So you are a very important person who should be an example. Then, the members are being tossed here and there. And it is for you to stay the ark and make sure that the ship is, 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 is stable on the waters. It is your duty to do that. So we talk about members moving up and down, following, uh, what do you call it, prayer center and prayer camp leaders and all that. And we keep saying, don't go there, don't go there. It is not instruction. Jesus says, teach. So on uh, when you teach and your members are not moving around, then you know that they are being stable. Otherwise, people have challenges. So they will move out. So it's not a matter of warning and telling them whatever. Teach them so that they will not go up and down. They will be stable. And then verse 15 says that instead, they will not move up and down, but instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love. Each part does its work. Uh, who has um, 1984 NIV? Or I'll read the verse 16. The verse 16, the other NIV says that as each part does its work. From him the whole body joined and held together by every support ligament grows and become, grows and builds itself up in love. As each part does its work. Okay. Fine. So what this one is saying that the whole body of Christ should grow. But it will grow and become mature as each part that's its work. 
So all of us, the area head is doing his work. I am doing my work. The traveling secretary does his work. The home and ever mission pastor does his work. And so this forum is to help us know your work. And then for us to mature and grow and to become like Christ and to be a solid body, the hand and this hand, they are far apart. This one separates them. But they are together because they are supporting ligaments that holds the head to the neck to I'm sure the Sunday school children, they understand this better than us. Yes. When they see the bone standing, they realize that they are ligaments supporting. So every one of us should support one another's ministry. And when we do that, the church will be strong. And if you don't, when you don't do your part, then you are making us weak. So every one of us should play his role very, very, very well. And then when we all do our work, it will be like supporting ligaments that is holding the church together. When you see a fellow Church of Pentecost minister, you, you should see him as a friend and a partner in the same business. When you see him, see him as a friend. Let the area here see the pastors as their partners in ministry. They are not your subordinates. And when you see that somebody is in Dabwasi, another person is in Sabah, one is representing us in South Africa. It is just like a football team. This is the number seven. This is the number eight. This is the number nine. We are playing together on the same side. So these are our friends. So I see all of you as our fr friends and players. And then uh, me too, I'm your, your captain. <laughs> I'm your captain. And... Number five, two is here. Eh? <laughs> yeah, so each one of us should play his part. Don't play over the bar. You understand? If you have to score, let us score and win, and heaven will be glad. Fine, so let's brace ourselves to see some highlights of the Vision 2023. When we are talking about Vision 2023, we are talking about that which was received in 2018 plus five years of the person's stem, it's ending in 2023. That is all the five-year plan from 2018, which ends in 2023, May. That is the vision 2023. When we are talking about a vision, we are talking about a purpose. Here, we are not talking about closing your eyes and seeing angels. We are talking about a purpose that binds all of us together. You see, God chooses men to lead or he chooses people to lead. And the people he chooses certainly may not be the best of the people, but he chooses anyone that he has deposited something in of which he wants to use at a material time. And all of us have deposits of God in us. So when God wants to do a certain kind of job in a particular time, he sets through us whoever has that that deposit or whoever he god has deposited that thing or that burden on him he will pick him so that the person together with god leads the church the person together with god leads the church and because church cannot be built by one person he has to share the vision with stakeholders and so we have tried to share the vision here and there people have spoken into the vision and now we have printed it out it has become our vision our purpose. So you, we don't have to see any one of you doing something against the vision or doing his own thing in our system. When you do that, you are working against us and you have become our opponent instead of the devil. You understand? What it means is that you have gone to join the devil and you are working against us. And sometimes you may not know these things. Anytime that you are working against the vision, you bring the vision. So try to, if it is gospel morning, try to make it gospel morning. Don't excuse yourself and think that it is not necessary. If it is necessary for us, it should be an agenda for you too. So stick to the vision. Let us all do a particular thing in a particular moment. You see, this is light. I can see this light and I can lift my head and look at this light. It's because it is pairs. But when you focus this light, 
I will not be able to lift my eyes and look at it. Or because I wouldn't want to do that. It will damage my eyes. Because now it is focused. So the effect is sharper and stronger. You may have some ideas, but let us focus the next five years on this purpose. So that we achieve something significant. Instead of making the vision kind of disperse. So once you are in our fraternity, you have to join this vision. That is what it means. You must have the humility to join this vision. Yeah. When people flout policies, we, we be, sometimes we, we, want to, we want to discipline them because it is a sign of disrespect to the entire church when you flout policies. Because this is what we all have agreed to do. You have joined us and you are doing something contrary. It means that you are interested in destroying the very church that feeds you. That is our interpretation of that. So visions and policies, they change. But until they change, follow it with all the apostolic zeal that is in you. Otherwise, you become a scapegoat. And by the time the thing changes, you have died unnecessary dead. You have died like a fool. And so now we all have to follow the vision. So when God laid this on my heart, I needed to share. Those of you who, have, who are still familiar with the acceptance speech, it was on that day that I spoke about possessing the nations. So this thing is not an afterthought. The thing is in you already. That is why I'm saying that God deposits things in us. He works on us. And he works through us and in the church. So the possessing the nation is the theme for the next five years. The overarching theme. Possessing the nations. And what we mean is to equip the church to transform every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. Is to equip the church to transform every society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. So the theme is possessing the nations. And what we mean is to start from the church. Now we develop the church, we equip them. So when you are a traveling secretary, when you are a PIWC pastor, when you are the general secretary, when you are the chairman and you have the space and you stand behind this lectern, you should have in mind that you are equipping. Don't just come and tell us old wise fables teach you need to equip the church so that we will transform every sphere of our society with the values and principles of the kingdom of God these values and principles of the kingdom of God are the, are the teachings of Christ are the principles that the scripture teaches is a way of life the lifestyle of the new creation as spelled out in scripture and that is the light and the salt that we produce when we live according to the precepts of the scripture. So that is what we mean by the theme. The team test, the overarching team test that all of us should know and to be teaching from is Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. Ephesians 3, 10. So we are in Ephesians already. We go to chapter 3. And then verse 10. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. His intent. Because from chapter 3 verse 1, Paul says something here. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ for the sake of the Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation. Now, it is in chapter 3 of Ephesians that he actually speaks about a mystery that has been made known to him by revelation. In fact, the apostle Paul had so many reasons why he would not accept the gospel that Peter and Co. were preaching. He thought that that was against Moses and the law. 
until he was apprehended in Damascus. And according to him, God revealed a mystery to him. And this is the mystery, as I have already written before. In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Now this is Paul saying that I'm writing to you. But when you read my writings, you'll be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. And this is key for all of us who are pastors of the Church of Pentecost. Don't put the vision documents aside. When you read them, and then when you listen to me, and you listen to our leaders, you understand the insight of this vision of possessing the nations. So you also pattern your ministry after this vision. So you need to have the insight. Once you get the vision document, keep reading it prayerfully and read the scriptures that are accompanying the vision. That will help you to understand the insight into the mystery of the possessing the nation. Here he says that into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of God's holy to God's holy apostles and prophets. Verses is key. This is that, this mystery is that, now he's going to tell us the mystery. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise of Christ Jesus. This is the mystery. That the Gentiles who hitherto were not members of the body of Christ, were aliens to the commonwealth of Israel, were of the uncircumcision. The mystery is that now through Christ, all Gentiles have part in Christ and in God. This is the mystery that Paul says God revealed to him. Then he says, I have become a servant of this gospel. Now, so when all of us have a vision, you should become a servant to the vision. Now, somebody called me, one pastor, he was complaining that his area head doesn't talk about the vision at all. His preaching is something else. And the young man is frustrated. Because you should become a servant of this vision. You should become a servant of this vision. And you must work towards it. Verse, let's jump to verse 10. He's saying that his intent, God is, God's intent is that now, formerly it was through Israel, now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known through rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. God chose Israel to reveal himself to the other nations. Now God is choosing the church to reveal himself to the world. That is all that this means. And this is what we are also embarking upon. That through the church of Pentecost and our members, every sphere of society should be affected by the values and principles of the kingdom of God. And this one, we cannot just do it. We have to equip the church so that the church will go out and represent Christ well. You see, all of us are branches of the true vine. Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branch. So wherever you find yourself, you are a branch of the true vine. So that our members should be branches of the true vine. To represent him well, just as Paul said in Corinthians, that you are ambassadors of Christ. So God has bequeathed to us a ministry. And this is all that this vision is all about. Equipping the church to possess every sphere of society with values and principles of the kingdom of God. The word possess is an ancient military term. That means to take over, to overthrow. Now, Jesus said, pray that thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. That is the prayer that Jesus asked the church to pray. Because there is a king who is already here ruling the earth. And every generation of believers should ask themselves this question. What values, what 
culture is controlling our world. And if the values and cultures does not glorify God, then we should pray that the kingdom of God should come and overthrow that king that is ruling. Here we have a nation that is bedeviled with great corruption. Meanwhile, we are all Christians. And if you and I are ministers in this generation, then we should pull the kingdom of God down. But it will not come. It takes people who will take it by violence and by force. Because if I were the devil, I would not sit down for another kingdom to come and overthrow me. So you don't go to a strong man's house unless you bind him. Otherwise, you don't take over. So when we are talking about possessing, we are talking about battle. Battle. We are talking about overthrowing the values of the devil and establishing the principles of Christ in our society. And the Church of Pentecost wants to lead the agenda and refocus the church's agenda in our country. We are here, we see all kinds of churches around and we need to overthrow them with this vision and the principles of the kingdom of God. So as Christians, we need to engage the world and overthrow the vision. The overall goal, the overall goal of this vision is this. Now when we talk about this is the overall goal, now, but when we say a goal, what does a goal mean? The result or achievement towards which efforts are directed. So in the next five years, we are going to direct efforts. We are going to direct effort towards a particular agenda. So we are not just preaching. We are not just doing church. We have a target to hit. So what is the target of this um, possessing the nation agenda, the overall goal. Our overall goal is uh, in two dimensions, but one. We'll give you two bullets here for the sake of simplicity. Our overall goal is a church where members go to possess their nations or their spheres by transforming every worldview, thoughts, and behavior with values, principles, and lifestyle of the kingdom of God, thereby turning many people to Christ. That is our overall goal. So all that we are doing, we are envisaging a church whose people will go and overthrow the things of the devil with the principles and values of the kingdom of God. The Old Testament, I've always said, is not different from the New Testament. It is a type, and this one is the anti-type. It is the explanation of the old. That is all that it means. When God told Jeremiah, uproot, destroy, break down, that is what we are going to do by this. As possessing the nation, we are going to uproot, we are going to destroy, we are going to break down, but that is not enough. You need to plant you need to grow, you need to build. So this is the overall goal, part one. And then in other words, we also foresee a refreshed church. And this one is very important, the word refresh. What that means is that we have it, but yetim. Uh, we are redigging the old worlds, the worlds that gave us life, that the enemy seems to stack with sand. We want to redig the old wells, refresh church that equips and releases its members into ministry as agents of transformation wherever they may be. So this second one sums up all. It is powerful than the first one. So this is the overall goal. So we foresee a church. What church do we see? That is our overall goal. So we are working towards a particular kind of a church. So we are from this church working out a better church. Those who will come after us, we also work out a better church from where we will live off. You understand? Until we all reach the unity of the Son of God. So we foresee a refreshed church, a church that is freshened up. Where we don't talk about people don't come to church in the evening. Where we don't talk about uh, elders, when you call them for meetings, they don't come. When you have all these challenges, look at 
this one. A church that is refreshed, that equips and releases its members into ministry as agents of transformation, wherever they may be, wherever they may be. So that is the overall goal. There is a gap analysis that we try to look at. Where we are to where we want to go, there is some gap. And then, you see, we, when we talk about the church in Ghana, from the 2010 population uh, uh, census um, analysis, 71.2% of us Ghanaians claim to be Christians. But we also have a nation which is so much corrupt to the extent that I know some jobs in Ghana where about 70% of the employees are Church of Pentecost members. The kind of indiscipline that goes on there. When you hear and you see the corruption, you cry. Because it has become like a norm. And because we are not doing anything about that, it has become like the law of osmosis. It is dissolving itself into where the strength, the concentration is low. And everybody thinks that it is normal. It is not normal. If 71% of us claim to be Christians, this is not the nation that we should have. We should have something better if you are working with the principles of God. Gandhi said, he, 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 he doesn't like the Christians, but he likes the principles they stand on. Because if you put heaven aside, if, and the whole world is to operate by the principles of God, what peace, what progress, what development would the world see? So the nation is not like as if 71% of us are Christians. And that is the problem that we want to find solution for. Are we able to do that? Yes, we are able to do that. Because God is on our side. Because it has already been written in scripture that through the church, so God's agenda for the world is always done through the church. Christ in you is the hope of the manifestation of the glory of God on the planet earth. God has fashioned the church already as his agent of transformation. So the church can do it. But when you come to the church of Pentecost, our current strength gives us edge. You see, God has helped us and he has positioned us such like that today if the church of Pentecost speaks, churches want to listen. When we, we plant sign balls, churches will then sit and plant sign balls. Whatever we do, they look to us for leadership. I just joined the GPCC executive. And because I just joined, even though we are founding members, I don't have any posts in the GPCC executive. So when they are taking their pictures, I'll go and sign somewhere. And then they themselves will call me. Say, oh, so come, come, come. And then they'll push everybody. And then they'll let me stand by the president himself. Yeah. They'll let me stand by the president himself. Recently, we have seen that most churches in Ghana, the big ones, and that is an answer to our prayer, their, their themes and their annual distance is patterned after ours. Bishop Mark Bakel said somewhere that everybody should learn the, from the Church of Pentecost. One professor, Osafu Kantanka, he met me recently, he said, Apostle, this vision is not for Church of Pentecost. It's a national agenda. And then recently when we went for GPCC meeting, uh, the leader by asking me to preach. Mm? Maybe I'm not sorry any actually. Maybe I didn't sorry any actually in Ghana. Deliverance, big men, big symbols, I am this, I am that. And in the midst of I am this, I am that, look at the nation. <laughs> you 
You see, John Wesley's and uh, Elijah's, they did these things. They refocused their society. They refocused their society. And we should refocus the society. Let God rule this land. Otherwise, he may not be the Lord of laws as we are claiming. But if he is, then don't let us look at this and then be, be sufficient in doing church. No. In 1847, 40, 43, 47, thereabout, three pastors or ministers of the Methodist church they decided to travel to an island, the Fiji Islands, 1837. Those days, the people were still cannibals, Omu, Omu Winipa. And they wanted to go and evangelize the place. Then the captain who was carrying them on, the, on the, the ship. These are three ministers with their wives. They were going to Fiji Islands to go and talk about Jesus and take their place for the Lord. The man called the leader. He was called Calvert. And he advised him to change his mind from the trip. Because you and all these people with you, you will not survive. You may lose your life. And then this master, this minister, looked at the captain's face and he told the captain, we died before we came here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about we are going to lose our life. We, <laughs> we died before we came here and the man kept quiet. They did the ministry, they did the ministry till about eight years when the king of that island gave his life to Christ. And then that was a breakthrough. Where did they get this thing from? Because a century before, their leader said this, Give me hundred men who love God and fear nothing but sin, and I will move the world. Give me hundred men. He was not asking for too many. John Wesley, give me hundred men. Who love, the, who love God. You see, the parameter to know who is a good minister is not about his preaching. It's about his love for God. That is why Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than this? Because that is the only criteria. Sometimes we say that let's, let's increase their salary, but money will never satisfy any of us here. Because inherent in money is an insatiable ability. So when we give you 10,000 even for your purse, we say, praise the Lord, now we will work. But when you hear that petrol is gone up, you tell us, General Secretary, if people have to do something about Tito, then we have to take you to 1,200 a month. And that will not even make you a, min a good minister. That is not the criteria at all. The criteria of the good minister is his love for Jesus Christ. I want us to rise and be praying about what I've just said. Let us pray that God will help us, that we will be like the John Wesleys of our day. Let us pray that his love will consume us. Shall we pray together now? So, kaya mando do 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 basin, tondo basin de, ha ye mo son do 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 de 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 Biriando ro ro bo ko tandi di di bi sende bakayanda bo lo bo ko bari andere re 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 ba sandi di bi se keri andere ba ban bo li biri andere re 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 ba si ko lo bo sandi re re ba biya biando ro 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 bo ko tanda me do u yes concentrate on him now. When you love him, it's not about my station is not big, my car is not good. Oh, yes. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before your presence. And we thank you, O oh God, for this honor you have done us by calling us into this great ministry, Lord. And Lord, as we are before you, we pray that you continue to work on us. We pray that you touch us. Help us, O oh God, to love you and to love you alone. Your word has said that we should love you with all our strength, with all our hearts, with all our might. This is our prayer, O oh God. We want to fall in love with you on daily basis. We want to love you on daily basis. Lord, help us, O oh God, that we would love you and love you alone. And that we shall fear sin. And through us, O oh God, we will possess the nations for your king, your son. We thank you and we bless you for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please resume your seat. We have some advantage now. Our current strength should be able to help us. Our numbers, 2.7 million of us, is no joke at all. Now, we, 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 we have become a big church in terms of numbers. So if we want to possess the nations, it is possible. It is possible than when it was before, when the Church of Pentecost was in the fringes of society and people did not respect us. So we have some advantage to be able to possess the nations. Now we need to have, be strategic, strategic in our approach. We need to be very, very strategic because now we are battling against the world system. And because we are soldiers, we need to map some strategy. So what is the strategic approaches that we want to use? The first one is equipping members of the church with the required resources. We're equipping the members of the church with the required resources. So we need to equip members with the required resources. Then the second one 
is transforming society. Second strategic approach is transforming the society. The third, but on the transforming society, we'll be looking at some key areas. And I want you to look at these key areas. The first one is that we will deploy our members as agents of transformation. Now we shall equip and we want to transform the society. The first one is for our members to go out as agents so that with their lifestyle and their words, we will change the sphere where our members work and where they live and where they are. That is the first one that we want to do. Second one is that we will partner with the government to do certain physical and uh, visible things that people can see, to lend support to the government. That is why we are embarking on prison mini, uh, building prisons here and there. And then we also want to have some police stations at places where crime is high, but the presence of the police is not there. We want to get support. I have lived in the north for four years as an area head. And I lived in the north also as a student many years back. In the dry seasons, mostly, you see small pond of water. The pig is standing in it. The cow is drinking from it. And the human being is fetching it. The same kind of water. It gets to a point where there is no water at all. And then when you see members come to church, they come like that. They are certain, makes them look as if they are not part of us, but they are part of us, but they are certain. How can we say we are Christians? And then we, if you just be 17,000, you can sink a well for these people. If Jesus were around, he would have done this. So we are trying to get about 25 to 30 uh, boreholes for uh, those in the deprived community annually. When God grants us the grace, we can increase it. As I speak now, we are constructing the prison at Ejra and another one at Nsaum. You see, somebody came to me who is not a member of the church. When he heard we want to embark on this prison project, and then he came telling me that he is daring me. If we build one, he also build one. And then when he heard that we have started the Ejra one, he brought some money to start the Nsaum one in our name. These projects, ever since we started, we have not spent anything on them. Yeah. People have been funding these projects. And so we want to partner with the government. It's a strategic approach. Now, somebody says, why the prisons? When we build this place for the prisoners, we will have our presence there. Our chaplains will be there. Instead of going out and saying, this one, we have had the sinners free of charge. Huh? And we have come them. Before they leave our hands, we are taking them straight to heaven. Yeah. And then we also have workshops and all this for them so that they can be deployed into the society as responsible people. And so these are some of the things that we want to do. And then community developments as well. These ones are the bus stops that we are, the shelters are the bus stops that we are building and all that. And in your community, you can also partner with the chief to do something, any small thing that can help. This one, the locals, the districts can also do something. The campaign, the environmental care campaign and all that. These are little things that we are doing so that we will possess the nation. We can't talk about corruption and irresponsible officers when we do these things. We are showing some responsibility. Then after doing this, then you can say that you are not responsible. At least you can do a very, some, some little thing to help us. The third strategic approach is strengthening and realign existing institutions and structures to propel the transformation agenda. This is the third strategic approach. We have existing institutions, but every vision should kind of look at the structures and realign them so that they will be able to help us achieve the agenda. So we, we are looking at some new introductions into our structures. Some of our structures we are 
kind of changing them in a way, but we not disturbing the entire system that we operate in. So some of the key areas where we have realigned our structures or kind of strengthened them are in this um, ventures. Now we have embarked on home and urban missions. Home missions simply means that we are meeting people who are not, not of Ghanaian origin, who have traveled here for trade or otherwise, for school and all that. And so we are meeting them. The urban missions is, we are still aware of the urban drift. So people are still coming. So we have revamped the norm ministry, but this time we have extended it to cover even those who are not from the northern extraction. That is what we mean by home missions. And then the home missions, the PRWs, you have a key role to play in the home missions. We want you to establish churches for the Chinese and all, all these other people. We are neighbors with these French people, but our French church, we have never grown them. So now we are looking for lands to build French churches. At least we can have one at Aflao, two in Accra, uh, even in Drobo, in the East, uh, the Brown Afro region. They, they, I hear there's strong presence of the French people there in the Dunkau areas. Now some of the Chinese, they have come to settle. You go there and they are farming and then they are selling their products. We need to have a church for them. Because if you bring them into the Danasi environment, they will, they, will, they will not enjoy it. Language is spirit. So we need to fashion something that will help them. And then the persons with disability, and then the chaplaincy. This chaplaincy is key for this possessing the nation's agenda. The counseling unit, we are also putting great premium on our universities. Because we are thinking that if we have to possess the land, we need to equip the people. And you can't have any better place to equip people than the university. So we have sunk a lot of money into the university now. If you go there now, they are trying to reorganize the whole place. The WCs that were not working, we are removing them all. They have done a rewiring, the gates, the entrance. They are changing every place. And then we have put the two schools together so that we can have our accreditation also, uh, yeah, our charter quicker than we envisage. So we are doing so many things. And then this Sunday, PUC is going to launch a foundation. Just as the Cambridge and the Harvards do, it is the foundation that gives them money. You see, Ghana schools, we always complain that the government is not giving us this. But you see, we can raise the money ourselves. So we want you to be present, those of you who can, and then let us support this cause. Uh, uh, one retired minister on his retirement day gave us 200,000 Ghana cities. And because this foundation was there, he was able to say that let's take this to the PUC foundation. So when we create a foundation, then people will know that there's an avenue to channel resources into the school. Soon, we'll become the best university in Africa. Yeah, soon. And this one is doable. So PUC, PTS, we want to go that way. If you have any question on possessing the nations, ask your area head. Eh? God bless you. Mm -hmm. Shall I please ask that you stand up now and then just commit this ministry that we have given you into the hands of the mighty one and pray a prayer that god give me a better understanding of this ministry grant me wisdom and grace to be able to administer this ministry very well and help me to do my part so that the entire church of god will grow let's pray together <laughs> A juma juma nya nya me juma juma oh nya me juma ya ta a juma nya me juma a juma ya ta Amen. 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 Amen.
Open your eyes and look at me whilst you are still standing. We just sang a song, uh, one of our old songs, Nyamie Guma Yede. I wonder how the people of old value the work of God. To the extent, say, Omoka say, Nyamie Guma Yede. But in our generation, we tend to talk and complain. But they saw that this job that God has given us, Tough as it is, sacrificial as, as it is, 
I'm saying, I'm here, you my dear. Me, I'm me, no, but now what they've been a year, Mosa. So, until you get to such realms, you have not started being a minister yet. Yeah. Until you, you get to that such realms, now we may hear software and cassa, we are Pentecost software, but we may hear software and cassa, oh, and you mean some. And these were the songs that our people of old sang. Shall we lift up our hands and pray that the God will open our eyes to know him better and to be able to interpret him better to our congregants. This was one of their songs. Say, Yes, so much. Say, Yes, We want to thank you for this opportunity. We want to thank you for this call. Help us to know you and to understand this call that we shall be completed, committed to you and your church. Strengthen us, Lord. That we shall free ourselves from all sort of encumbrances. That we will be able to commit our spirit, soul, and body, our energies, our monies into this kingdom business. Help us that each one of us will be able to do his part. In Jesus' name, amen.